Hello and welcome to this episode of Positively Negative. The camera I'm taking a look at today is not an expensive point and shoot camera. It's not one of those $300 Yashica T4 things with the Carl Zeiss lens or anything like that, no. On the contrary, this camera, my Minolta AF Big Finder, shouldn't cost you more than a few dollars. I wouldn't pay more than 100 Rand for this camera. So the first thing about the Minolta AF Big Finder is that it's a point and shoot camera, all automatic. There is no control over exposure, you've got basically no control over focus, There's no, it focuses automatically. You can't turn off the flash. You basically are a slave to the machine. It makes all the decisions for you and it frees up your mind to ponder grander mysteries like the meaning of life and the origin of the universe and such. The lens is protected nicely in this little uh, case. So you slide this guy forward. Boop and it reveals the all-glass lens. Surprisingly, it's an all-glass uh, three-element lens. It's a 34 millimeter, so it's a funny sort of focal length. I think it's about f4.5 or 5.6, you know, it's slow. So it's a 34 millimeter, so it's almost 35 mil, which is a pretty good everyday focal length. And that's really what this camera is, is intended for. It's for everyday snaps, family gatherings, holiday snaps, maybe going out to parties and, you know, taking photographs of drunk people, that sort of thing which is kind of what I use it for. <laughs> so what are the key features of the camera? Well, firstly, in its name, it's called the Big Finder and it lives up to that name. It's got a very, very big, very bright viewfinder. I mean, even my Canon 200D can see through the viewfinder. I mean, that's incredible. So it's got this extremely big blue viewfinder with nice yellow um, frame outlines. And it's probably the biggest, brightest viewfinder in my collection. I read online that these cameras were, were designed for elderly people who um, maybe have bad vision, which uh, suits me fine because I've, I've also got crap eyesight. So in fact, using the camera, composing a shot is, is, is very easy and quite, quite fun to do, actually quite pleasant. Much better than a lot of other little point and shoots that I've used in the past with these pathetic little minuscule viewfinders, which are awful. The camera takes two, uh, two AA batteries which are that's nice. Ooh. So the camera takes two AA batteries, standard AA batteries, which is nice. It's not one of those weird camera, digital camera batteries or film camera batteries that cost the earth and are impossible to find. I forget what they're called. Um, but luckily it's just standard AA batteries. It is DX coded, but only for 100, 200 and 400 ISO films. So you're not going to be shooting Portra 800, that it's not going to read the DX code, and it's just going to assume it's a 100 speed film. So if your film is over 400 ISO or is not DX coded, like bulk loaded film for example, the camera's going to assume it's ISO 100 and expose for that. The camera's got shutter speeds ranging from 1 50th of a second to 1 500th of a second. If the built-in light meter in the camera estimates that 1 50th of a second is still too slow, it won't let you take the shot at all. You'll just get this annoying little red flashing light uh, right next to your viewfinder here where this green light is. That will turn red when the camera decides you can't take a picture, which can be very frustrating because I don't want the machine to tell me what I can or can't do. I'm a man. The camera auto winds and auto unwinds film. Loading it is a, a breeze. Opening the back, you'll see there's not much to it. You slot your film in there. You drag the lead all the way across to the other side. You close it. And it auto winds the film on for you. That's really cool. To switch the camera on and off, you just slide the lens button thingy across, which I can't seem to do today because I'm pathetic. It's as easy as that. The camera auto focuses for you. Uh, the, the focusing distance, it, it's not close. So I've taken pictures of people which I th who I thought were far enough away, but uh, the camera couldn't focus that close. So I'd say it's probably about one and a half meters to two meters is the minimum focusing distance, which gives you pretty much like a three quarter shot. You know, you, you're, never, you're not gonna do close up portraits with this camera. And uh, to be fair, that's not what it's designed for. In terms of build quality, it actually feels quite nice in the hand. It's very small and it's very light. In winter time when I wear jackets and coats and things, I can often slide it into my jacket pocket, my coat pocket. It's just all plastic except for the lens, which is glass. Uh, the grippy bit is a bit sort of uh, thicker plastic, denser, but the rest of it is quite sort of 
cheap feeling and cheap sounding. Although for a camera that's, I don't know how old this camera is, 20, 30 years old and it still works. So I guess it's not that badly built. On the top of the camera, you'll see your shutter release button. Uh, half pressing that locks in the focus and pressing it all the way down will take the shot. You've got a self timer button, which initiates a 12 second self timer. And there's also a little button at the top, which initiates a manual rewind of the film. So if you want to rewind the film before you finish the roll, for whatever reason, you can press that button using this little, um, little thingy key, um, this little doodad on the end of the wrist strap. You use that little button there at the end of the wrist strap to uh, press the little manual rewind button. Also on top you'll see a nice frame counter so the camera will tell you when you've shot the roll and how many shots you've got left which is very nice. On the back of the camera you've got a little see-through window so that you can see what film you've got in there in case you've forgotten. That's a nice little nice little touch. I'm somebody who prefers to use all manual cameras like my Pentax SV or my Miraflex. You know cameras that don't have any automation whatsoever. I like to be in control of the machine. I like to decide everything but Sometimes it's nice to have something that does everything for you. Sometimes it's nice to go out in the evening, perhaps you're having a few drinks with friends or it's a, someone's birthday party at their house or something, and you want to take a camera with you, but you don't want to take an expensive camera or a camera that's maybe a bit showy, or you know, you don't want to be that guy lugging a Mamiya Flix TLR around at a house party. It looks a bit pretentious, doesn't it? So it's fun to take something like this to a party like that where you can snap away. It's got a built-in flash, so it's, if it's dark, you know, you, you can you can illuminate the scene with a flash. You can hand this camera off to your friend who doesn't know anything about photography, but they'll know, you know, press the button, point in the right direction. And so you can actually be in photographs for a change instead of the one behind the camera, which is always nice. Also a little small touch, I left this camera lying on a table in a pub once uh, and returned half an hour later and it was still there because no one wants to steal this old camera. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's valuable, so no one's gonna steal it, right? Um, which in South Africa is a benefit. So now I'll show you just a few snaps I've taken with this camera. I call them snaps. They really aren't planned photographs. You'll see most of them are taken at night with a flash, mostly with Kentmere 400 black and white film, which is not DX coded, so the camera reads it as 100 speed film. And these are just happy snaps taken at various functions and events. So that about sums it up for me. Don't spend a thousand dollars on an excellent point and shoot camera. Unless you're very rich or are a Kardashian or something, or you own a YouTube channel that reviews cameras and you get given these things for free, which would be great by the way, if anyone would like to give me a Yashica T4 for free, that would be really cool. But I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a point and shoot camera. In fact, I don't even have five dollars to spend on a point and shoot camera, so I use my one that I got for free. Use this one for free, save your thousand dollars on film, buy lots and lots of film and go out and shoot it. And at the end of the day, the images will look almost the same. Shh, don't tell anyone. So go out thrifting, buy yourself a cheap point and shoot camera and pretend to be a Kardashian sister. It's fun. All right guys, so that pretty much sums up this review of the Minolta AF Big Finder. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my drivel. Um, but I'll see you next time.